Hey guys, thanks for checking in this week. Uh, we're gonna be checking out all these new little Intel processors, like the, I mean, the 13900K. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's fancy, it's new, it's super cool. Obviously we've seen similar to what we have in the current gen from the 12,000 series. Same socket, a lot of the same processor features and stuff. Couple of new things. Uh, they doubled the efficiency course on all the processors. So rather than 6416, 12600K, 13600K is 6820. Not a huge difference, but you can kind of see it in some larger multi-threaded applications where having those four extra efficiency cores does make a pretty solid difference. As for PCI lanes, unlike AMD, did not jump to 5.0, still 20 4.0 PCIe lanes. Pretty much enough for most everybody, but similar base and turbo frequencies to the previous generation. Kind of upsetting to see that they didn't, you know, jump up a little bit or at least increase a significant amount. Um, but at the same time, it does take a lot of work and things like the 13900K did get all the way up to 5.8 on turbo and generally seems to be faster. Now, moving past space and turbo frequencies, we can jump into memory. Now, we already saw this from 12th gen, DDR4 and DDR5 as an option, just depends on the board. Super great to see this actually. It's a, it's a great feature that I love that they're adding in. It kind of allows you to say you're upgrading and you want to bring your DDR4 with you. You don't have to buy a brand new kit of DDR5 that's super expensive. You know, you can kind of save a couple bucks there, which does help if you're on a budget. Now, if you don't care about money, you can just throw all of it at a new kit of DDR5 and get the fanciest, newest, fastest motherboard for this generation. So that's also great to see that they went for the ability to get that high performance. Uh, pricing wise, we actually jumped up a little bit this year. So kind of upsetting, 13600K is 30 bucks more than the 12600K was at launch. I mean, you are getting more efficiency cores, things like that, but also kind of disappointing to see. On the opposite ends, the 12900K was 620 at launch and now it's only 600 for the 13900k so great to see that that's dropping down a little bit might just be intel moving their prices around but always good to see when things decrease in price you know everybody loves a little extra performance per dollar i'm going to do a little bit of our testing we do have all core clock speed as well as power draw for all of these from our testing on geekbench cinebench time spy cpu both horizon zero dawn and metro exodus so kind of a good mix of things to try and get a view of how these do as for all-core clock speed, really great looks from the new generation CPUs. They're all super high clock speeds. I mean, the 13900K averaging 5.4 across all cores under load, really great to see. Compare that to the 12900K's 4.9 across gigahertz across all cores. Um, we're seeing some significant improvements, which when you consider that they also added extra efficiency cores, does mean we get a little bit more performance squeaked out of that. Great to see there. In exchange for that, that extra performance and those extra cores, it is taken out in power draw. 13900K is just blazing through at 240 watts of power drawn. That's that's going to be a lot. It's going to generate a lot of heat. You're going to definitely need something, you know, a 360 rad, maybe a thicker 240 rad, but big coolers. That's what you're going to be seeing with these 13900Ks. Compare that back to the 12900K, only 184 watts, which still pretty significant, but not nearly as much as the 25% more on the, the 13900K. Now, core clocks and power draw on the lower end CPUs, like the 13600K versus 12600K, a little bit more closer, and this is kind of nice to see. 13600K is at 5.1 gigahertz across all cores versus 12600's 4.5 gigahertz across all cores. Great improvement there. You know, lots of performance jump, plus the extra efficiency cores is gonna help us out there. Jump that to the power though, you get 140 watts on the 13600K and 115 on the 12600K under load. So not as quite as big of a gap as let's say the 13900K to the 12900K. Great to see there. So not quite drawing as much extra power, but getting a lot of great extra performance out of that. Let's jump right into Time Spy CPU. So we ran this test across the entire current and last generation. 13900K is just dominating at the top there with 22,277 points. Compare that to last gen's 12900K at 19,455. It helps out that those extra cores are then able to influence a little bit. We can kind of see that across the board, the more cores you have, the more time spy likes you. So our 13900K and 13700K are at the top there, followed quickly by the 12900K, then the 13600, then 12700 and 12600. So great to see that on the top end, things are improving pretty linearly, but on the bottom end, we actually see a pretty significant jump from the 13600K or from the 12600K to the 13600K. 14,221 score on the 12600K to the 18,322 on the 13600K. So pretty significant when you compare that to the 13900K versus the 12900K. 
you actually are seeing a measurable improvement and it may just be due to the efficiency cores giving it a little bit more of an advantage but always nice to see. Jumping into Geekbench and Cinebench, we kind of see that on Geekbench, pretty close scores to last generation. Not a whole lot, but you can kind of see where those efficiency cores as well as that extra clock speed jumps in. 13900K at 2174 on the single core versus the 12900K's 2024. So minor improvements, but pretty much what you're used to seeing from you know one generation to the next. Uh, Multi-core though, you can actually see a pretty significant difference. It's 18717 for the 12900K and 22. 892 for the 13900k so pretty solid jump again might just be due to the efficiency cores but from what we can tell so far they do make a difference but that clock speed is actually helping a lot in the multi jumping into cinebench we do see a little bit of a bigger difference in things like single core the 13900k 2288 on the single core score versus the 12900k's 2011. you can see with that improved single core score uh, obviously that extra frequency on the 13900k does help out there a little bit jump over to multi multi-core score and you can actually see this is where the 13900k is starting to shine uh 38,755 and 27,555 from the 12900k so pretty solid jump there again a lot of what I've been saying is the efficiency core seem to be making a difference in anything multi-core in this case I'd say it's more than just the efficiency course it's a huge jump from previous gen and a significant improvement even over like the 13700k which is much closer to the 12900k in performance numbers which is also great to see because if you had a 12900k or that's what you were wanting last gen you can jump into something like a 13700k it'll be a little bit cheaper you might be able to find something that is much more niche for your budget but still gives you similar performance so as you probably guessed 13 gen is a little bit faster in all of these games but you can kind of see that the big things are 0.1 percent lows jumped up a little bit like in horizon zero dawn you're up to 117.2.1 percent lows on the 13900k versus the 12900k's 111.8 Obviously not a huge jump, but it's always nice to see that bottom level of the smoothness curve is moved up as high as it can be and you get those buttery smooth frames coming into your PC. Jumping over to Metro Exodus, we actually see a very significant in difference in things like 1.1% lows. Uh, 12th gen, apparently was just not a fan of this game. The 12600K and the 12700K were both at about 35 uh, for the average 0.1% lows. Uh, don't know if it was just a fluke, but they were pretty consistent across multiple tests for that. 12900K, not as much, 53.7 on the 0.1% lows. Might be due to the extra cores that the 900K has, but as we can see, the 600K, 700K, and 900K from 13th gen all did fine with 54.4, 57.8, and 63.4 respectively on the 0.1% lows. Now that we've kind of gone over all the tests and stuff that we've done, you can, you can see the 13900K, it's a great improvement over the 12900K. And while, again, it's only 20 bucks less MSRP, it is still nice to see that a better performing processor did drop a little bit for the MSRP. Extra efficiency cores across the entire lineup means that no matter which one you pick, you're just doubling the efficiency cores compared to the last gen. Always great to see. Hey, thanks for checking out this Intel video while we looked at the new processors. You can see them all here with these uh, red, red boy processors from AMD. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Tell us what you like. Tell us if you would, would like one of these. These are really cool. I can't give you these ones, but you can look at them. If you like the PC in this video, be sure to contact our sales team at sales at avadirect.com or you can head over to our website by clicking on the link in the description below. You can choose from many pre-built options, gaming or workstation based, or use our configurator to build a PC of your dreams. Be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe and don't forget to follow our social media channels at avadirect.com.